have your way right now, God. Have your way in our hearts, God. May we look to you, our great God and King, and see that you are radiant, that you are worthy of praise, that you are worthy of glory and honor and majesty, and that it is both the cry of our heart and the joy of our heart to give you all the glory that is due your precious name. Thank you, Lord. May we come to you not with a burdensome heart, but with a heart of thanksgiving. Reflecting on and remembering what you have done for us. Because of the great love with which you loved us while we were still dead in our trespasses and sins. At the right time, Jesus, you came and you died. And on the third day, you were raised to new life. And with your resurrection, we now have new life in you, God. So I will praise you, my great God and King, for you are worthy of praise. I will praise you, my great God and King, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made by you, my creator. You who am also my redeemer. So I worship you as creator. I worship you as redeemer. I worship you as my savior. I worship you as my Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We just bless you this morning, God. We thank you this morning. We give you all the glory, God. We give you all the praise, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I just want to welcome everyone this morning. I want to welcome those that are worshiping in the house of the Lord this morning, those that are worshiping with us online. We certainly have reason to give glory and honor to the Lord. We certainly have reason to praise the Lord. I'm not even asking you to, to go out of your way or to find. I'm saying that God is worthy of praise. So let's just give him the glory to his name. I'm saying that if God has given you breath in your lungs this morning to praise him with. If God woke you up this morning and gave you breath in your lungs to praise him with. Somebody should shout praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to welcome everybody this morning on this Resurrection Sunday, this Easter Sunday. We get to celebrate our Lord Jesus, not just his, his death, but his life, his death, and his resurrection, and how in Christ we have new life. This morning, I just want to take a moment, amen, and read from Matthew chapter 28, and I'll read verses 1 through 10 from the ESV. This is Matthew's account of, of what happened on that third day. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he has said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So, the, so they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. We get to celebrate and remember our great God and King and how Jesus on the third day, he was resurrected to new life. 
and we here and, and brothers and sisters in Christ, children of God all over the country and all over the world, we, we take time to remember and to rejoice in, in what Jesus did on the cross for us and, and how in his resurrection and new life, we now have life in him. We see God's perfect plan fulfilled in Christ on the cross. And because of that, we now are not only reconciled to God, but we now have access to draw near to the Lord. So this morning, I just invite you to it's enter into worship. I, re, I invite you to reflect on what, what crisis, life, death, and resurrection means to you. And walk in the freedom that Jesus paid for with his very life. This morning, as we do each Sunday, I encourage you, as we, as we worship, there's two bookends of our worship. It's worship and it's the word, and they go hand in hand. Let's continue to press in to God through worship, and let's continue to, to press in to his word and, and ask God to continue to reveal himself to us in, in fresh new ways. Ask God to continue to make his word plain to us that we may live in a way that not only glorifies God, but points others to Christ. Amen. As well, this morning, we just take time each Sunday just to give glory and honor to God for not only providing for our every need, but giving us the opportunity to sow into kingdom work, the work that God has called us to do together. So we take time each Sunday just praying God's perfect will. And I ask you just to bow your hearts with me as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Thank you, Lord. Dear Lord, help us to give generously into our church without reluctance or compulsion. May grace abound so that we have the finances we need to do every good work you've assigned us. Make us rich in, re in ways that result in generosity on our part so that you'll be praised. Help us to grow in unity and a sincere love for one another. Amen. Amen, family. Let's worship our great God and King. He's worthy of praise. Let's give him the glory to his name.
We're going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Starting in verse 50, it says, I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I will tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. 
For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written. Let's, let's declare this. Death, where is swallowed up in victory? Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ.
Worship the King. Worship the King. Worship the King. Worship the King. Our God is an awesome Worship God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. My Lord, my God. Top and power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Say so. Our God Say so. is an awesome God.
Somebody say so. Somebody testify. How good, how good is your God and my God? Come on. I am so glad this morning that you guys have not come to be spectators. <laughs> but you have entered into the presence of God. I was thinking as as I was as we got here this morning, I was I felt like God was just showing up in the parking lot. I came in this place and I said, you know what? It didn't matter what color the walls were. It didn't matter what was on the, the menu. All I was praying about was that the presence of God was here. Hallelujah. See, sometimes we get caught up in stuff that don't even matter. If, look, if it don't work, push it to the side. I don't need a mic. I don't need a chair. All I need is the word of God. Hallelujah. But listen, God, our God is an awesome God. Aren't you glad that you serve a risen Lord? Aren't you glad that God didn't judge you for your sin before you had an opportunity to hear the good news of Jesus Christ? Aren't you glad that somebody told you and, and you and somehow in, in our pride, and somehow the, the, the power of God penetrated and we received the word of God for salvation, hearing about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Isn't that good news? Somebody give God some praise this morning. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with Jesus. Dumb power and love, our God is an awesome God. Come on, yes. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is so good. You can have your seats if, if you can. And I just want to say, God is so good to us. And I want to just, even this, this morning, I just want to say, Happy Easter. And better yet, without question, Happy Resurrection. Come on now. There is a lid that tops all, all things, everything that we believe and encounter. Listen, look, this is so good. This, and I want to just say it's so good to see each of you today. Uh, I, you know, I look at my, my family, and, and uh, you all are part of my family. Somehow God has kind of, like, allowed us to have family that's beyond our family. You know, we're part of the family of God, you know. And, um, but some of you know, some, some of us go way back. We go deeper roots. We have pains that we gone through. We have things that we celebrated through. And, and, and so we, will, we understand, and, and many of you, we, we understand this thing called life that we live together. Amen? And life is not always what we, what we if, you have to, if you were to write your own script, you'd be like, you would write a whole different script. But guess what? By the grace of God, we're here and we can testify of his goodness. Amen? Amen? Somebody, you ought to be thankful because God is just that good that he can take things that we kind of mess up or, or don't understand and he can bring it all to, uh, um, to, to just fruition in our lives. You know, I, I, even as I look around the room, me personally, I'm going to ramble just a little bit and, and, and I'm probably going to preach longer than normal uh, because I haven't been here in a while, but that's okay because I'm, I'm here and you're there. But no, I'm just messing. But uh, I think about my brother Henry over here when I was going through my, my you know, uh, all my paperwork with the VA trying to get 
things understood with my cancer and all that kind of stuff. And, and this brother was, was, was paramount in, in seeing things through as he was um, taking care of things at the VA for me. I see my, my, my crew over there, the whole Dupree clan. It's just a blessing to see y'all. You guys, amen. We got our folks from Front Royal up here in the back. We got my girl back there uh, 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 handling uh, our, all of our, our the, the life through pregnancy and, and the lives that are saved, the families that are touched. We got, look, we, God has blessed us. Somebody said we're blessed. we're blessed. But not only are we blessed, we're what? Highly favored. I don't want you to forget that because I have an empowering message I want to share with you today. And as I go through this, I want you to stay connected. I'm, sometimes I, you know, I'm, I'm a teach and I'm a preach, but I want you to kind of don't miss when I'm preaching. You kind of like, oh, man, I'm like starting now. I don't want you to now. I want you to hit your neighbor and say, look, you need to get this, okay? <laughs> but listen here. As I share this, and I want to also say hello to all of you guys welcome that are online, what a blessing it is for all of us how God has even used COVID to, to connect us in ways that we would never even imagine. You know, he, even through that season, you know, there was a charge with, with freedom to kind of learn how to, to do the online ministry and different things. So all things work together, Romans 8, 28, for what? For the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. You know, and so as I was thinking about that, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from what? Heaven above. And, and automatically, if, you know, and, and I pray that this happens for you. Anytime something happens, I think, God, what he's, it always triggers another promise of God. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. <laughs> There's no greater gift you can give somebody than the love of Jesus. Amen? And so, so if you're listening online or here today, just I want you to, to receive and not just receive, but there's an empowering moment that God wants to release through you and, and to each of us as we, we live this life for Christ. Now, as I go forward, if you, if you know me, I'm quite the fundamentalist. You know, I've been called that, and it's okay. You know, you know kind of like the old me, like if, the, if it wasn't in the Bible, I didn't want to hear it. And that was kind of like I would draw the line in the sand. I'd be ready even to fight you for it, <laughs> you know. But, but God has kind of been refining me over the years, and I'm kind of learning a better understanding of how God is moving, how he operates. And... Uh, and so, so I want to just get this out of the way real quick, you know, and so because, again, we know how God uses all things together for his good, right? And, and so when we think about, you know, it was like 325 uh, that the Council of Nicaea decreed that Easter should be observed on the first Sunday following the full moon after the spring equinox. Now, I don't want to get into it's all about the moon and the lining and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And it happens twice a year, once in the spring and, and then in the, in the, in the uh, uh, around the spring you know, September time frame, but along with Christian believers, you know, and so basically there was an opportunity for those who didn't, who practice other religions to practice new life. And so this idea of spring, and I'm, I'm, I am such a fan of spring. I love life. I love new things. When I see little flowers popping out of the ground, I get excited. You know, yesterday we had some raindrops coming down, and I could smell grass again, and I was like, this is, we're, you know, something just kind of lifted me up. And so this idea that they were, there was opportunity for those who practice other religions than the Christian religion to, to, ben, to benefit from or to celebrate. So it was so close to Christ's resurrection that, that the, the Christian and the non-Christian, the same, they began to celebrate. And so, and so stay with me here. Are you, are you with me so far? Because yeah. so, all things work together for good. So God can take what the enemy or whomever it is, however you want to label it, and for Christians, we can take authority over that and bring and communicate why this new life is so important. Why spring is so important, but also what's more important, new life in Christ. And so you can get hung up in being a fundamentalist and saying, well, I don't believe in the Christmas tree. I don't believe in the Easter bunny. And, and you can get stuck there and never share your faith with those who need the love of Jesus. Y'all, are you there? Are you tracking with me so far? Because this has been really hard, because even as we were talking about this, it, do we call it Easter Sunday? or? And I'm, I don't care what you call it. <laughs> you know? And, and Fred, I can remember, and it, and it made me think, because I'm a, I'm a young 62 now. You know, I'm a tweener. I'm not old, and I'm not young. I'm a tweener. <laughs> we're tweeners. So if you're there with me, if, you, if you're somewhere in there, say amen. You know, and so, but I remember as a kid, you know, uh, I, my parents always got us an Easter suit. I mean, we wore suits. Me and my brothers, and we have our suits on. We're 10, 11, 12. I don't care how we had our suits, and, and my sister had her dress. And, and, 
And even some Sundays when, we, when, our, when my parents didn't send us, they would put us on that bus with our suits. And, and, and so, and, and then we would always have these Easter egg hunts after. And, and so I remember them as a child. And guess what? I thoroughly enjoyed them. I was very competitive, and I always had the most eggs. And if I did not, I'd steal yours. So what's the point? Happy Easter, everyone. Because what? Easter is about life. But more importantly, it's about the resurrected life. Because to be good, you can do all the good things. You can celebrate all the good things that the, the what we might call, we even label it, that the secular world or the uh, pagan world. We can celebrate all the things and, 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 and miss Jesus. Right? I'm not bad. I do these things. But guess what? You can do all the good things. You can knock the ball out the park. You can ser- serve on your, your, your community boards. You can, uh, uh, you know, save the whales. You know, <laughs> you know I was thinking, you, there, there, you know, we were down in, in, um, in, in um, uh, at an aquarium in, in, in uh, Hampton or in uh, the Virginia Beach area. And, and it's like everybody wants to stand for something. But guess what? What's most important is that we stand for Jesus. Amen? So, so, so celebrate life. And I want to just speak life right now over you. The abundant God-filled, spirit-filled life. Life. Can you say life? life. John 10 says, I've come that you might have life and have it to the full. I like one translation that says that you might have it abundantly. That you might have life overflowing. I'm not talking about how good you are, how bad you are, what mistake you made last night or the curse words you said over. And, and, and I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being right with Christ. Because when you're right with Christ, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but that's OK. Because when you're right with Christ, there's, there's something there's something that transforms your inner man. And you allow that to be the supreme authority over your life. Because if we're tra- we are transformed by the renewing of our mind that we can prove the good and perfect will of God. If we could hear say amen this morning. And see, again, so I, I, I love this season and the joy that it brings to so many, you know, because we know that, like, you know, when, and, and you can get in, if you're really an Advent state, you know, Christ died 33 AD, around that time frame. So what came before? It's like you said, what came, the chicken of the day, what came, the resurrection or Easter? I don't have a problem. It's simple. It's simple. The resurrection. So don't get caught up in the foolish chatter, but tell people about the love of Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, here's a Greek word for you. Anastasis. It means to to the raising up or causing to stand. You know, it's not only the remembrance and celebration of salvation and spiritual life, but there is the raising from the dead for the just as well as for the unjust. To, for judgment, you know, un- and understand this, that the resurrection is grounded in a parousa. Here's another, parousa, parousa. Come on, parousa. parousa. It, it, the parousa of Christ is the second coming because if, if Christ didn't raise from the dead, he wouldn't be coming again. He would be dead just like right alongside Muhammad uh, and Confucius and all the others, you know. So, so but the, the idea that the resurrection, what's important about the resurrection is that Christ rose from the dead and he's coming again. Oh, I love his birth, but guess what? I am so excited about the second coming of Christ. You know, I said, Lord, if I, if, if I might be here, but that's okay. Because I know to be, dead in, to be dead is to be alive in Christ. It's just like in the twinkling of an eye, you know, God, if Jesus shows up today, some of y'all are going to be sitting here, and guess what? Some of y'all ain't. And be good, and be, you better be hopeful you're part of the ain't. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? But, but listen here. The resurrection is grinding in the proofs of Christ. In John 11, we find the miracle that Jesus put over, that put him over the edge with his accusers. He raises his friend Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus had been dead for four days upon Jesus' death for, before his arrival in Bethany. And, and there he, he met Martha, who frantically says to Jesus, Pause. How many of y'all know any Marthas, first of all? He said, she says, if you had been here earlier, 
Lazarus would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, he will give it to you. That's good stuff right there. John 11 and 25, he begins, he says to her, she sa- he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever, anybody here part of whoever? Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. He asked the same thing of, the, the, of his disciples back in, in Luke 9 and 20, because uh, and, and, and he, was, he was having this conversation about, everybody was talking about he's this prophet, and, and this prophet is so-and-so, or he's like Elijah, or he's John the Baptist. And, he, and, and so Jesus asked his disciples, like, well, who do you say that I am? My boy Peter, he kind of said, you are the Christ the son of the living God. Who do you say that I am? See, Easter is the time of year when we celebrate what Christ Jesus has done for us. It's a time that we must ask ourselves what is significant about Christ and the resurrection. Why is this historical event so important? What does it mean for me? And what has continued to surface to me is his love. Simply his love. You see, Jesus had a special relationship with Mary and Martha and Lazarus. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, they were siblings. And the Bible says that, that Jesus loved them. Matter of fact, he spent a lot of time in Bethany with his family, and, and it became known as the town of Mary because it was she who anointed, anointed Jesus' feet with some very expensive perfume. And Matthew 26 and 13 says, Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel or this teaching is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Even in John 11 and 5, it says, Jesus loved Mary <coughs> and Martha and her, and, and her sister and, and Lazarus. But now it was time for those who hated Jesus to have their day. The Pharisees, as well, as well as many of the Jews at the time, they saw Jesus as a threat to their religious and their financial security. And after a few kangaroo courts with the chief priests, who were the religious leaders of that day, Jesus would be treated as a common criminal and would be led to a small place, a small hill called Calvary. We otherwise known as Golgotha, or the place of the skull. And according to the law, guilty victims would have their day. And they would have to, the guilty victims would have to carry their own cross. And they would be hung on a tree. This wasn't something new, and we kind of give credit to the Romans, but not necessarily. This goes all the way back into the time when, 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 when Joseph, you remember when Joseph was put in prison with the, with the chief booker and the, the, the baker and the, and the, and the, and the the, the, the butcher there, and, and, and he says that, he said, that he tells the baker that in the dream, he said that he would be hung on a tree in Genesis 40. Moses, even earlier, gave, uh, gave and when he was giving the law, he said that persons deserving of death was to be hung on a tree, and his body was not to remain there overnight. So they were just carrying out customs or, or punishments or rules as it relates to the law. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, Suzanne and I, we've been reading the Bible through this year, and and, and, um, and we had noticed that if like in, in Deuteronomy like 22 to 26, you can see everything that, that, our, that, is, that ev- every law, everything that we kind of understand as how things are done in our society really comes from that, that portion of scripture. But, but, but let me just stay on track here. Why love? But why love? What compelled Jesus to die a criminal's death? First, I want to tell you love and forgiveness. In Luke 23 and 34, he says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. How many times have you had to forgive someone because they didn't know what they were doing? We might say, give them grace. I say that a lot. Give them grace. 
But, but, but as, as he was sharing this, as he hung on the cross, there was those soldiers that offered wine that was mixed with myrrh. There's really an embalming fluid to dull the, to dull the pain around 9, between 9 a.m. and 12, the three-hour period. And, and, and at the time, his clothes were divided in, in the four shares, one for each of the soldiers that were there. And then the last, they cast lots. They basically rolled dice for the last piece, the undergarment that was seamless of, in one woven piece. So he was treated worse than the common cr criminal. He was crucified between two thieves. I hope you catch the prophetic word in this. In Isaiah 53 and 12, it says, Therefore I will divide him among a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul to death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. There's the love and sacrifice. The soldier said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. If you're that bad, come down off of that cross. They were just mocking him. In Luke 23 and 37, one criminal acknowledged that what, what Jesus was doing. He understood that he was the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And in Luke 23 and 41, he says, and we indeed just, justly, uh, uh, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. As I'm just thinking about this, I, I just think of the scripture, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. You see, that thief didn't know. He wasn't there talking. He was, look, when you, when you hung on the cross, I think, you know, well, it shows you the one was like totally ignorant about the matter. But then there was one that just says, Lord Jesus, remember me. How many times have you ever prayed that prayer? I remember, I, I often pray, Lord, remember me. And in the context of all that was going on in Jesus' life, he was still thinking about others. In this particular, he was thinking about his mother, and he looks to John and says, provide for her in John 19. He wasn't thinking about himself. He was always thinking about others. That's the message that I try to portray. And say, Are you thinking about others? Are we always thinking about ourselves? Is, it, is, is, is my motive at the end of the day to be right or is it to serve others? I was speaking to, we had a little conversation. We always have interesting conversations in our home. You know, but we were in Fairfax and I was telling Justin he was doing some, something about a little popcorn machine or something. You, you know, we get weird conversations on, even on Sunday morning. So I said, just be a blessing and let the blessings come to you. simple, but it's so powerful. Be a blessing. What about me? God got you. Because if you bless somebody, somebody think about blessing you. Just be a blessing. It was us that was on his mind. But look, there's the love and death to the flesh. About the ninth hour, he cries out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. In other words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And they give him this final drink of water. We see there's many different passages. You see them up on the screen. But, but he gives him this final, he's, he's offered this final drink of water. Really, it was just, just uh, wine mixed with vinegar. And it was given to the poor class. It's not what you would normally have if you were having the Lord's Supper. But it was, it was done in a, to to give him some more excruciating pain. And Jesus cries out, it is finished. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And there's the final piercing where he's plunged in the side and water gushes out and, and fulfilling all prophecy that not one of his bones will be broken. You can see that in Psalm 34. I've said all that to get to this point that we might see Jesus' love displayed in power. This part really excites me because it's, it's, it's the phenomenon. Those things that, that man can't even, if everything that I spoke up to this point is only, thing, only what God can do. But this just kind of like takes it to a whole nother level. You know, the temple curtain, we're talking about this morning, was torn from top to bottom. 
In other, in other words, representing that the Old Testament principle where the high priest had, to, he was the only one allowed to go into the Holy of Holies and, and to offer the blood, to, to sprinkle the blood on, on, the, on the altar. And, and if he had any sin, they would tie a rope around his leg. And if there was any sin in his life, God would strike him dead and the rope was tied out so no one else would go in there and die, but you can pull that priest out of it. But Jesus tears, the Holy Spirit tears the temple from top to bottom, saying that anyone who receives Jesus has direct access into the holy of holies, into the very presence of the God Almighty. This is why we say happy resurrection. We have access. Jesus made a way by his blood. And we can say John 14 and 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes through the holy of holies but by me. The blood of the lamb. That's why we baptize to identify, to connect with. Folks, I'm not ready. I'm not old enough. I'm not. Look, if you know Jesus, and that's my first cry, is that you would know Jesus through his life and his death and his resurrection. And you would say yes to the saving grace of our Lord. And you would say, Lord, I re- I'm coming not because of who I am, the mistakes I've made, or who they say I am. I'm coming because of your blood, because of your sacrifice, because your death for me on the cross. Because let me tell you a little secret. You'll never be good enough. You'll never be good enough. It's only by the blood. First Timothy, he writes, he says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10 and 19, the writer says this, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of, of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us, through the veil, that is, his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us, what, draw near with a true heart and in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Who would I like? Come on, somebody caught that right there. Look here, th- this, this phenomena, love displayed in power, this, he, the earth shook. In other words, there was an earthquake. <laughs> there was an earthquake about that ninth hour. The tomb was broken open. Let me tell you about this tomb because you hear many fables and all your, your I don't, look, look, here I go. Here I'm, tw- I'm, I'm meddling. All your Facebook and your, your TikTok and your all this, this other forms of, of study and, you know, <laughs> look, look, the tomb, the tomb, about two to, by about two inches thick, this tomb, it was over two tons. People talking about the stone, the, 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 the guards fell asleep. You a liar because... Look at here. There wasn't one or two. There was many soldiers guarding this tomb. And all of them wasn't taking a nap at the same time. Keep it simple, Pastor. And if... <laughs> I like you too, brother. I'm telling you what. Your worship is on another level. But listen here. And if a Roman soldier fell asleep, he'd be dead. They would kill him because he shirked on his duty. The tombs were broken open, hallelujah. The tombs were broken. And, and the Old Testament saints, catch this. Oh, man, you, look here. You can go and check this out. This is some good stuff right here. And, and uh, uh, man, this many scriptures, Acts 26, 1 Corinthians 15. And look at the, the Old Testament saints were raised to life. Listen, tell me, this, this, is, this is phenomenal. This is like 
out of this world. <laughs> he says, and, and, and so in 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 14, it says, For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen, what? Asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive in Christ, who, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not do what? Somebody say precede. Precede, precede those who have fallen asleep. And, and in other words, and, and again, Matthew 27, i am kind of got the scripture at the bottom there. It says that the tombs were, were also opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after, after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. In other words, you say bring it tied together. Jesus Christ, the firstborn of many brothers, no one perceives him in the resurrection. Are you there? And so these Old Testament saints... Because we got New Testament, we're with the church, so we know to be out in the body and presence of the Lord. But Old Testament saints, what they do? They slept in Jesus until he raised from the dead. And when he rose from the dead, brothers and sisters, let me tell you, it was a Holy Ghost evangelistic party. All oh, Jesus said, let's go into the town and show them my power. Yeah, that's some good stuff. If I was alive during that day, and I saw the tombs open, and I saw Jesus and all these resurrected saints, I would, I would have been like, Lord, right now, I'm not letting a second go by. Today is the day of salvation. Look here. <laughs> they went right into the Holy Seat of Jerusalem, and I just imagine it's just, What? <laughs> what? You thought I, I was just sleep. That and that's why even we're talking about people sleep in Jesus. Man, that's some good stuff. See, we're living in a culture today. Let me just bring this thing home for us. We're living in a culture today that says, believe in yourself. Be the... This is a, this is a, a, be the best version of yourself. Man, I'm, my Lord. Be the best version. You got to work to keep doing that. <laughs> That's hard work. How you know what your best version is? That's never in the story. <laughs> you know, if I just exercise enough, you know. I was I was messing around with, with my grandson Jaden and he's he's starting to get that, you know, that 14, 15, like I'm the I've got that, you know. <laughs> doing his couple hundred push ups and stuff. You know, that's he for real. So I said, all right, he got a little weight room down in the bottom. So let me jump on that thing. He had a little, you know, little forty fives on it. I ain't lift weights in probably a couple of years. I said, let me jump on that. I started like I said, I'm gonna show you something, boy. And I pop out ten of them, you know, that's something Aaron would do, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Let me go pop pop out ten, and I was like, and I'm walking away. I'm like, man, I'm gonna feel that in the morning. <laughs> 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 you know, but but that's the way it is. Be the best break. Look, sometimes you just gotta roll with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Look, be the best version. Go, don't look. Look, I don't care how educated you are. That don't make you good enough for Jesus. But we put a lot of stock in that. I don't care what your you're, you're, and I'm saying, look, I am so empathetic when it comes to people's pain. I can remember when we were um, uh, overseeing the youth in this church when we first began, and we took all of our youth down into to the Holocaust Museum, and and to see what how they experienced that. I think, I think you were with that crew when we did, and 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 and, the, and, and Jessica, and the, it was like, and I was like really surprised that young people could be empathetic to others' pain. And that's good that we expose folks, whether, you know, whether it's through slavery or whatever. Expose folks, because that's good to be, to learn and to know. But use it to point us to our Savior. Yeah. You know, because, because God, as simple as it sounds, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
He's the only redeemer, the reconciler, the one who makes us right. He can take us from our pain into to victorious walking and, and not be weighted down with the sins or the, the ills of others and, and the things they've done to us or we've done to them. And God says, if you're in me, you have new life. And, and if you're right with Christ, you will leave this world and you'll enter heaven's glory where there's no more pain, there's no more suffering, there's no more crying, there's no more tears. And, and you'll be like, you'll be like, I, and God will remove everything that has ever hurt you. He'll remove it from your memory. And you'll be with brothers and sisters, the saints of old and the saints of new, and you will just be celebrating the glorious presence of God in the new Jerusalem and, and what all that looks like. And you know, the beauty of what heaven is, that's for you and I to, to, to just seek out and say, Lord, I don't even understand it all, but I know one day I will be there. Amen? Understanding the resurrection is the difference between understanding heaven and hell. We know that Jesus spoke of hell more than he did any other subject. Hell and, hell and money, but we don't like to talk about those things in church because we've been saying, well, we want to be culturally acceptable. We might hurt somebody's feelings talking about hell, but you know hell is a real place. If you, are just, if you are excited about going to heaven, you ought to be just excited to stay away from hell. Uh-huh. But that messes with your own ideology, right? Or, or it can mess. I won't say I'm not being accusatory. <laughs> so Jesus, let me back up. So he says to Martha, do you believe this? He says to us, do you believe this? That's a, I'm, if, I, if I could end the service right there with that question, do you believe this? And if you believe this, what will you do with what you believe? Because this idea of belief is, is, is kind of twofold. It's a receiving. It's one of faith, but it's also an action. See, I like what Pastor John Kilpatrick, I, you know, and uh, uh, he, he wrote a book many years ago now um, as going through the Browns Revo Revival in those time frames. And uh, I think the title of the book is The Fire That Never Sleeps. And he says, he says, we may be praying for revival, but if we shut down the warning of the Holy Spirit, we are not fit to carry revival. In other words, we have to trust, we have to have faith in God, we have to have faith in the Son, Jesus Christ, we have to have faith in the power of the Holy Spirit, and without the Holy Spirit, we don't have the power to do the work that God has called us to do. What keeps the world, in, and we say that the world's going crazy, but you know what's keeping it together? The Holy Spirit. Because once, this, once Jesus comes and the Holy Spirit is removed, all hell truly will break loose. Do you believe this? In 1 Corinthians, in 15, uh, he says, in verse 20, he says, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man, Adam, came death, by man, Jesus Christ, also came the resurrection of the dead. Hallelujah. Lazarus was dead for four days. It's a picture of Christ raising from the dead, his power over hell and the grave. And it was that Sunday morning, that third day, Jesus rose from the dead. His spirit and his body united once again. The stones rolled away, and the woman went to the tomb, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Salome. And then Peter and John got into a foot race. John beat him there. He went into the tomb, and Jesus was what? Gone. Gone. Which leads me to my final point, love and response to the gospel. Listen, brothers and sisters. And even today, if you don't know Jesus, I'm, like, I'm telling you, the same rule, you got to believe. Tug McGraw said that, I think, was in the 1969 World Series. I, I'm, a, I've been a, I'm an avid, I like baseball, I'm, I don't watch all the games, there's too many of them. But, uh, but I, I always love the story of the amazing Mets. That was with the Tom Seaver, if y'all back, you know them days, am I dating anybody here? Tom Seaver and John Cl Clendenin and all those guys and, and Tug McGraw, and he was a relief pitcher, and he, and he came up with the slogan, you got to believe. And, and somehow, 
they caught on. They were the underdog. But guess what? They pulled it out. I think it was the Giants they were playing. I forget who they were. Was it the Giants? Somebody. They beat the Braves. Come on. See, I like, I like, there you go. <laughs> Healing on my brother right now, Jesus. <laughs> you got to believe. You got to believe. John 20, 29, Jesus said to, to Thomas, after all was happening, Jesus had resurrected, and he goes, because Thomas wasn't with the other 11 when this happened. So he come, and so, so Thomas has this conversation with his boy, and he says, look, unless I touch the, the, the nail prints in his hand, if I, he's like, look, I'm just not going to believe. And Jesus said, all right, I got something for you. <laughs> so he shows up to Thomas, and he says, he says and, and, and they go through this conversation, and, and, he's, and, and Jesus tells, he says to him, he says, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed, but blessed are those who have not seen me, yet they have believed. Yeah, amen? You got to have faith. Faith, Romans says faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things not seen. You may not see it, but you can pray in the power of the Holy Spirit, and God will bring it into fruition. He will bring things that you're praying for. Look, I, you know, I was trying to walk around here this, this morning with, with Izzy, and I was like, I'm just ready to pray because I just believe like there's something in the atmosphere. And I said, Izzy, just begin to pray over these chairs. You know, even though they're just empty chairs, let's pray people in those chairs. And, you know, it was nobody in here at the time. And, and by the grace of God, hallelujah, praise every, each one of you here this morning. But we just begin to pray, and I, and I just, faith is the sense of things hope for the evidence of not seen. In other words, I can pray for a lost soul. I can pray for, for, for a financial when, I'm, when I mess my stuff up, and I can say, God, give me, for, give, give me wisdom, Lord God. And Father, you know, you know, whatever, I can pray the will of God, and by faith I believe it, even though I not, have not received it. And if you don't believe me, go to Hebrews 11 in the hall of faith. And all of these saints that had died who had not received the promise, and yet when Jesus rose from the dead, guess what? They were coming into town. I don't know if they were stepping or what they were doing, but they were making some noise. Hallelujah. Look, blessed are you that trust in the words that I'm sharing. They're not my words. They're his words. And if you will believe, you will receive the power of forgiveness. Later on in Luke 24 and 45, it says, and he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. When they was walking down the road of the maze, it was like, and, and Jesus was walking right along with them. They didn't even know it. Some of y'all, Jesus walking right with you. You don't even know it. You know what I like about Jesus? There's a lot of things. <laughs> I think my brother's morning, he's like, I'm going to read out of 1 Corinthians. That's my friend. I, I said, you could start from Genesis, and I would have been shouting all. <laughs> but you know what's so cool about that? Jesus is with you, even when you, you just don't even know how to cry out to him. And he'll just open up the scriptures to you. In other words, he'll open up, he'll open up your mind. He'll open up your heart. And you would be like, where would that come from? And God just said, I love you so much that I'm not, I'm not even going to leave it up to you. I'm going to make myself known to you. If you, the scriptures, and, and some of these scriptures, look, I'm just speaking out of overflow. He says, if you will not harden your heart as they did in the rebellion. See, the only way Jesus will not reveal himself to you is if you harden your heart and you reject him. That's, that's, re that's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. If you got a hard heart, like in Jeremiah, he says, I will turn up the, your, the soil of your heart and I'll make it pliable. But if you got an inkling of a, a good heart, God will work with you. He'll make himself known in a real way. Mm -hmm. In Luke 24, he opened up their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And it says that Jesus, you know, he breathed on them, the filling of the Holy Spirit. In John 20 and 21, it says that Jesus said to them again, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. And if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. That leads me to this next point. Tell it. If there's a word of encouragement, 
condemnation, whatever. Somebody say encourage me in the Lord right now. I pray that you have been, but I'm going to go deeper here. God is telling us. Your belief is not just for yourself, it's for us. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with our culture today. Many of us are so many, so spending so much time trying to be accepted by others that we don't share our faith. Yeah. It's, 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 it's almost to our shame. Now, if you don't know Jesus, I want you to know today that Jesus loves you. He wants you to know him. And all he would say to you if you don't know him is, come home. Yeah. Come home. But those of us that are just trusting the preacher or, or some, I don't know what we're hoping that would happen outside of our communicating yeah. as Jesus sent them, uh, he sends us. Yeah. And, and understand this, and matter of fact, Lifeway has a research that they put out. This is a couple years old in 2021. Most research is a couple years behind. But it says only three in 10 unchurched Americans, 29, only three in 10 unchurched Americans, 29% say a Christian has ever shared with them one-on-one -on -one how a person becomes a Christian. Only slightly more say a Christian has told them about the benefits of participating in a local church or the benefits of becoming a Christian. For, for four in 10 un unchurched Americans, they've never had a Christian explain any of those things to them. And that's what this research says. And so before I get to this last verse in closing, I want to challenge us. Stop being okay. We lost our edge. It's not just about being a good friend, being socially accepted, sharing the benefits of the world, the fruits of this, our labors, you know, our glass of wine or that fine dinner. Not wanting to lose any of those friends, that friend base that we have. We do activities together. Take part in carrying it. If we love Jesus, if we believe in the resurrection, if we believe that, 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 to, that there's a hell and there's a heaven, if we believe these things, then we need to tell it. The gospel, the euangelion, the good news. The good news is for everyone. That's what makes Resurrection Sunday so good so powerful because we celebrate what Jesus has done for us. You heard the adage, I don't know what Jesus has done for you, but I can tell you what he's done for me. Well, even more than that, share the word of God. What I've taken the opportunity to share with you this morning, I've kind of had fun with this and I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about it, but I pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit so that we can have the, we would experience and share the joy of the resurrected Christ, with his parousa, his second coming as we look forward to it, but also the mandate that we must tell others about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's why we celebrate. That's why we live and move and have our being. Matter of fact, if folks don't know how to share Jesus using the scriptures, Pastor Hurst, I charge you to do a class to teach folks how to share their faith. Yeah. Not just their experience, but connect the word of God. Yeah. We need to learn how to use the scriptures in sharing our love. And then break it down. And what I would always say is unpack it. Yeah. Let folks understand. Now tell them your story. Or tell them your story, but make sure you use the scriptures. Because you got to make it about Jesus, not about you. <laughs> because people are like, well, you know, he, yeah. just because you got this big financial breakthrough, or just because you got your healing or whatever. Uh, you know how people, people are funny. But you're talking about Jesus. Like, I, I praise God for all the oncologists, the hematologists, all the folks that are, all the medicine. But guess what? My glory goes to God. My glo my I tell the doctor, I said, look, when it, when it came down to a, a, me deciding what kind of treatment I was going to get, I told the doctor, look, here. he was going down, he was going down, well, you can do this, you can do this, and, I, and, and, and the Holy Spirit was speaking to me at the time. I'm sitting in the chair like, I said, stop. 
This is what God just told me to tell you. And that was the way we went. You know what the doc said after that? That was a good church. <laughs> Why? Because it came from above. <laughs> you know, hallelujah. So I want us to be excited about what Jesus has done. Can, can, look, and, and we ought to be. We ought to be. We need to tell the Bible story to our children and our children's children. When you're giving them that bedtime story, tell them about, boy, there's so many good Old Testament stories and New Testament. You can tell them, just tell them about Jesus. It's not, oh, it's, 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 I know it's not culturally relevant. I say, I know, but tell them about Jesus. Get old school on them. Teach them how to sing the song. Did I hear my girl Ellie up here? She goes by Ray Louis like, ah! I'm like, go girl. <laughs> Tell these kids about Jesus. And don't be, and look, and be proud about it. Be proud about it. Tell them about Jesus. If your gift is, and I'm speaking to Christians, you understand, because I'm speaking Christian lingo. If your gift is serving, teach your kids how to serve. If, you, if, you're, if your gift is prophesying, teach them how to prophesy. Yeah. If, if, if you're, whatever your spiritual gift is, teach it to your children. Don't just say, well, they're going to make up their own mind when they get old. No, teach them. And then when they fall off the wagon, you pray for them back in the wagon. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I just life in this world? Come on, can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> Look, oh, man. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm done. But I want to share that because that's, I feel like I need to share my heart. We, as the church, need to be that church. Even though we're in the building, we're a church without walls. Why? Because we impact the world. And I, and I love the vision that we always shared at this church. And if you know I said with me, changing lives, changing the community, changing the world. Hallelujah. As the church goes, so does the world. Hallelujah. Would you stand on your feet with me if, you, if you're able and look, 1 Corinthians 15, and it's starting with verse 50. It says, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be, somebody said it, changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, the trumpet will sound. That's how mine sounds. <laughs> and the dead will be raised incorruptible. <laughs> and we shall be, somebody help me, changed. Somebody say, I'm changed. I'm changed. I'm changed. Hallelujah. Father God, right now in Jesus' name. And even as I pray, I want you to think about, even this morning, how you would respond. The altar is open. The altar is open. The altar is open. If you need to receive Jesus for the first time for salvation, or even if you want to renew your relationship with Jesus, what better time to do, to do that than on this resurrected Sunday morning? Today is the day of salvation. If you feel the Holy Spirit is tugging at your heart and you say, well, I want to respond to you. I want to give my life to you. I want to renew. I want to recommit my life to you. I want to pray. I want us to pray together. Pastor Horace and I, we're going to pray this morning over you for God's filling of the Holy Spirit and that the new life that God has promised would be yours and you would begin to experience the changing grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You say, Lord, this morning, I've been absent from sharing my faith. Give me the power, the anointing, the boldness, the joy to share about the love of Jesus to others. For to know that if we can save one sinner, 
one sin, all of heaven will rejoice. We don't need notches on our belt. We need souls in heaven. So God, right now, this morning, we pray as we just look to you at this particular time in our service. And those of you online, just you can kneel where you're at. You can lift your hands where you're at. You can respond. You can put something in the chat. Just respond together as, as a community, as a body of believers. One little slice in the whole. We want to lift up Jesus by giving our lives to him, surrendering, saying, Jesus, you are the Lord. And we thank you for your resurrection power. We thank you. Would you move now as, as, as the worship team sings and we're, we're ready to pray over you and we're ready to pray together. We're celebrating. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Yes, he is risen indeed. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Holy Spirit, we know you're not done with us yet. So continue to work on us right now for your glory right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. The altar is open.
said amen would you put your hands together and just praise the lord before i just turn it over to, to pastor horace to bring us to close us out this morning i want to reiterate today is the day of salvation don't be afraid to stand with jesus if you truly said lord i want you to be my savior my lord Come anyway. Just tell somebody. But I would ask you to tell Pastor Horace or one of the other leaders. Just tell someone so they can help you walk the path that God has for you. And if you haven't been baptized, if you've been born again, you need to be baptized. Or maybe you've been wandering. So I want to get baptized again because I want to get this thing. I want to get for my own spiritual journey. I just need to get clicking again. Just let them know and, and We'd love to see you celebrate with you as you just trust God in, in the what's next for your life and the journey, this journey we call life. As I said, it's appointed to everyone to die and then the judgment. Where will you spend eternity? Again, not how you behave. God will change your behavior. But what are you doing with the life God has given? I think it's a time and season for the church to be bold for Christ again. Don't just stand up, stand out for Jesus. Can we do that? Can we say amen to that? You are greatly loved. I can tell you I love you, but nobody can love you like Jesus. <laughs> Nobody can love you like Jesus. Nobody. So you are greatly loved. From the highest authority in heaven and in earth. 
receive that today. As you walk in your resurrected power. In Jesus. Pastor Lord. Amen, family. Let, let faith arise in the hearts and in the lives of God's people today. As Pastor Kurt asked each one of us this morning, do you believe the gospel? Do you believe that Jesus is who he said he was and that he did what he said he would do? Do you receive it, meaning have you taken possession of it? And if the answer is yes, I believe, if the answer is yes, I receive, then that means that now you have a responsibility to steward the gospel. Share your faith with others and walk in it day by day. Remembering that we are no longer our own, but we have been bought with a price. So today as you go out, as this week as you go out, go out carrying the gospel with you everywhere you go. This week as you go out, go out walking in the freedom that Jesus paid for with his very life. And point and tell others about Jesus. Believe it, walk in it, and share it with others. I pray that you would have a blessed Resurrection Sunday. I pray that you would know that God is with you and that he is for you. And as the word of God says to each one of us, if, if, if God be for you, then who or what can, can stand against you? Come on. Yeah. Have a blessed week in the Lord. God hey, bless each one of you. I did have one more thing to say. Can y'all help me say happy birthday to that young lady? Say Pete. She said, come on. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jessica. Happy birthday to you. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Amen. On that note, God bless you. Have a blessed week in the Lord. Oh, one more. No, I'm just messing <laughs>